Hi, I'm Shilpa Butch, uh, faculty in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience. The focus of my lab is primarily looking at uh, HIV-associated disease in the brain. Now, we all know that HIV causes AIDS or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, and this when the person gets infected, the virus can actually enter the brain within two days of infection. So it's very early, but the disease doesn't develop until years later. So the point comes to mind is what takes so long? And when I first joined this area about 15 years back, I was interested in exploring what are the factors that change at this late stage of the disease. So I have pursued the pathogenesis of HIV in the brain and now my interest is more in looking at the effects of drugs of abuse. We all know that HIV can be curbed with antiretrovirals which are very prevalent in this country but despite that there are people that take drugs of abuse such as um, cocaine, uh, morphine or methamphetamine. These people are having a lot more emerging problems of the brain with HIV infection. So clearly the disease has not gone away. A person may live longer, but they seem to have a lot of these complications, age-related problems, Alzheimer's. So we are currently very much interested in looking at how HIV and these drugs can synergize to cause a more accelerated disease in the host. And some of the approaches that we take in our lab are uh, we use cell cultures, and finally we validate our findings in the human tissues. So it's a combinatorial approach that we use to answer the question, what exactly is going on in these brains? Now, uh, right from the very beginning, I have always enjoyed teaching and mentoring. I've had a group of, we in our lab have students, we have summer students that come in, do really good work, and have gone on to have names on the papers because they've contributed to the lab work. We have postdoctoral fellows, we've had clinical fellows in the lab. So we've had a good experience of bench to bed site where we've had clinical people telling us what we don't know about the disease and we telling them what they don't know about the basic sciences. So we work in a very multidisciplinary situation. Uh, we, we promote interaction among students, postdocs, helping each other. And one thing that I really prerequisite for coming to my lab or we like in students is a passion for science. We really want them to be soaking with hunger. They need to be wanting to learn things that drive to do well and the rest falls in place. So it's one of those professions I would like to say the science or basic sciences where you never get bored with your job. In fact, I will say I'm being paid to have fun. It's, it's a thing that you think about, you breathe about, you dream about, and it keeps you going. It's a very wonderful, you feel charged thinking about that experiment. Most of the time the experiments don't work out, but the thrill is the journey and not the destination really. Of course we get grants, sometimes they get rejected. You gotta be very perseverant about these things, but when you get that after a lot of hard work, it is well worth what you get. And the papers, you know, your goal is to publish that wonderful finding that you get in top notch journals. And when you get that one paper published, it becomes history. It's archived for life. So what more can you ask for? You know, you really have your rewards right in front of you. So it's a profession that you never get bored with. It always gives you new challenges and drive to work harder. My thing to students is there's nothing impossible. Come with that drive, the hunger for science, and then sky's the limit.